Hello and welcome to another episode of New Media Tech. This week we're going to talk a little bit about what we use for switching here. We are using a Blackmagic Design uh, ATEM. It's uh, called the Television Studio. It's the model we use. It's actually their smallest switching device. It has the ability to, to switch six different inputs. Um, there are four um, SDI and four HDMI inputs. The uh, three and four uh, input three and four are switchable between either HDMI or SDI, but you cannot do both at the same time. So you total of eight inputs, but you can only switch six at a time. And we actually use take advantage of that feature. We have uh, a camera that's really close to the ATEM, and we it's, it's actually HDMI. And the other one that we're, that we use uh, when we're in this room is actually running SDI, and they're both camera three for us. So uh, we have the three other cameras in here are cameras four, five, and six. And uh, I can't really show you the output of the screen the way we have the thing configured right now, but um, maybe I'll grab the camera here and we'll show you a little bit what it looks like. But uh, we have our camera one, which we use for either Skype or we use it for um, the Apple TV for a remote, which I'm gonna use it today, Apple TV. And we have channel two, which is our second Skype machine. And then we have camera three, which I said it goes back and forth, and four, five, and six are in this room. And we can change things around. Camera three can be one or the other, and camera four is the same way, can be one or the other. So um, what I'm gonna walk through a little bit right now is just the ATEM software. We're not using a control surface. Um, they are not horribly expensive, but in our case, I don't know if we'd actually would benefit from it. The, uh, the switching using the software is actually very simple. Uh, the ATEM switcher itself really isn't um, that really fully featured because it can't do a lot of things um, that the bigger switchers can do. It's really a small, low-end, what I consider a low-end switcher. And it's, you buy for like a, a under $1,000. The uh, actual control surface for it is like $2,500. So, um, but using the software on the PC for what it can do is very easy. I mean, actually, it's single key presses um, and it's very easy to teach somebody how to do it. You can use the mouse as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to the software and then it's gonna be a little bit weird me doing this because you're gonna see me switching in the middle of it. But let me switch over to it. And this is my desktop. And what you're looking at right here is the ATEM software control. And what you see up top is we have program and we have preview. And you're, and you're not gonna be able to really see me doing this other than you're gonna see the green light change at the current time. And as I click on things, you'll see the light is changing for preview. So green is preview. And if you do auto, it will fade from one to the other and you're going to watch it fade. Let me go put me in preview. You're going to watch it fade automatically over a rate of one second to, to me. So there's me. And I'm gonna hit the auto again, and you see it fade over one second. Now cut is instant, so you see that down here. So uh, lots of other things you can do. We can put in two different media, and we can come into the media. I have nothing loaded currently in the media, but you can put in media in here. Uh, let's see. Can I put in something really quick? And nope, these are all uh, video files, so. I'm not gonna be able to do that. All right, so I can't really put anything in really fast, but uh, you can see in the audio, this is our audio input from the different cameras that we have, and then this is the external input from the AES, and then these are all combined into the master. So you can do actual audio. You can also see that I'm not using any of the camera audio. If I turn on the camera audio, audio you're, you're gonna, gonna start, start hearing very ambient sounds. You, you see it coming online and you're going to hear all a bunch of noise. So we've not used the microphones on the camera, so they're off. But in the case where you were actually at a live event, there's a possibility you would want to use that. It just doesn't work in the way that we do it. And as you saw in the media, you have these slots that are available for media. These are for uh, photos. We use them for lower thirds and things like that. And then you have the settings, and right here is where you can pick between SDI and HDMI for cameras three and four. Um, the ATEM does not convert, so if whatever video standard you have it set for, your cameras must be set for the same thing. If they are not, they will not be seen. You can change the layout of the, your 
program and preview, which I'll try to get the camera set up here in a little bit and we'll show you that screen and how it looks to me when I'm sitting here. Uh, but you can see you can rearrange all this stuff as well. So let's go ahead and put it back and we'll go back over to the switcher. And you'll see we have, we can go to program black, which is what's going to happen. You're black now, you can go to bars and we can come back over to the screen. You see me change that and your six inputs and you can go to colors too. There's a yellow and an orange and that's just by using these two, these two colors. And you can do chroma keying. So um, this only has one on-air key and two downstream keys. So this is considered an upstream key. And then we have these two downstream keys and you can turn them on. You see right now, it looks like, well, you can't see that probably, but it's trying to pick um, the graphics. Let me do this. Let me go to a downstream key. And instead of media player, I'm going to do color one. And oh, you can't really tell it does anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I want this to be camera one and I want the key source to be color one and you can't really see it doing much of anything really so it's this isn't really the show where I'm going to show you the downstream keying at some point in the future I'm going to show you how to do green screen with this um, and that's actually done with the upstream key the downstream keys are not as flexible which makes sense, the difference between the upstream and the downstream key. But the upstream key, you can see right here, you can go and you can do chroma, pick your U, things like that. You can make all kinds of, of changes. So let's say I make it close to yellow and I turn this on. And it's not going to work for me. I'll meet your player too. There's the problem. So let's go to color. And I'm gonna turn this on. And you see, I just keyed over with that color. So um, this is actually on air immediately. If I hit this key and let's say I go to camera one as a preview and don't wanna do auto, you'll see it fades in and it'll fade back out. If you look at the on air, you see the on air going on and off. That's what this does right here. So um, it's pretty simple as far as a, um, a mixer goes. In fact, it's very basic, which is some of the problems that I have with it. It works fine for just switching, but we do so much with additional media that it's one of those things where I like it to do more. So, uh, but what I wanna show you is, let me go back over here real quick, and you're going to see me hit keys one through six. So I'm gonna hit, look down here at the preview and I hit two. So now camera two is in preview. Now camera three is in preview. Now camera four, five, and six. If I hit the uh, enter button, you'll see a fade and a fade back. So I'm going to put into preview camera one. So you're not gonna see really anything happen but the bar move. So you see the bar move by pressing enter. If I hit the space bar, oh, you can't tell it because it's not moving that. Let me do preview back to me. Here's the space bar now. Here's the space bar again. Now the other thing you can do, and this is how we generally run it, is if you hit the control key, you'll see that this cut light came on. I can do it by hand too, by clicking on it. And what that does is when I hit any number, so now I hit one, it immediately goes. I hit three, it immediately goes. I hit five, it immediately goes. And this is generally how we run it. We don't we generally run with hard cuts like this. So we hit the control key. This cut light down here comes on, let me do it again. So I turn, hit control. You see this cut down here at the bottom, goes away. I hit it again and it comes on. So when it's off, if I hit different things, you'll see the preview changes. But when it's on, it is a hard cut to whatever number you press. So it's really easy to use. And the thing about this is I can use it any computer anywhere. I could have multiples hooked up and see what the other people are doing that are controlling it. So sometimes I'm sitting in this room actually doing the control. Other times somebody's sitting in the other room doing the control and you'd never know it. So 
the other thing is sometimes my computer just isn't handy. I have something else on the screen. Sometimes display web pages or something like that, and it just isn't handy. So what we've created or what I created was an iPad app. Let me go look, show you what that looks like. This is something that I created and it's in Touch OSC. And on the web, after this episode of the show, I'll actually put all the stuff you can download it and how you can do this yourself. But I created an, a form in Touch OSC and right now I am in cut mode. So if I go and I touch anything, it's going to take you directly to it. So you can see me doing that. that. I can also do a take which is a hard cut. I can do an auto, which is a soft, and do auto again. And down at the, uh, that's all the preview because I have con have the control thing pressed, but you're not gonna see what this does, but, oh, actually you are. So you see, you probably can't tell this um, because you're not seeing it, but you're actually seeing the preview screen change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly adjust this other camera that is running this, and I'm going to move it to the screen in front of me, and you can see that as well. So hang on one second. Okay, so what you're going to see now is what I see in front of me, and this is a screen that has the six cameras, and the two at the bottom are media players, and then on the left the top is preview and in the bottom left is the program. So as I change what I'm previewing, so let's say I want to preview the control. So you see the top changes to control. And if I pressed the space bar, it's an immediate cut right to that. And I can go back and there's the screen again that you see. And at the very top, let me do this. Let me, uh, you, can pro you can probably barely see my mouse moving at the top, but I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit four. So you see all that changing. So you see me bouncing around. And those are hard cuts that I'm doing right now. So you can see at the bottom, here's the preview changing. There's that preview. That looks like a mess, but it really is screens inside of screens. But you wouldn't put me in the preview. There I am. And I can press the enter button and I fade in nice and slow and switch back just like that. So that is the control screen. That's in front of me all the time in the studio here. Uh, so I can see what's going on. In fact, if uh, the top right one, which is camera two, which is running uh, our replays right now, our reruns, would uh, normally be a Skype caller, but right now we have the reruns machine in there. So, and you're seeing me in preview, and I could change my preview, say, to a different camera. Let's say camera six. So now you see the camera that's over here, right there. And I go back to camera five, and it's this camera right in front of me. And uh, camera four, there's nobody on there. You see the microphone sitting there. This is actually my microphone right here. So that's the interface on the ATEM and what we see when we record these shows. And I'm doing all this through my Mac right now, and I could just easily be doing it on the iPad. So that's all I really wanted to show you. We're going to go in much more detail on the ATEM stuff later on, especially when we get into the workflow. Um, if you watched the video from a couple weeks back about the studio tour, it's actually it's only a 1U high, and it's very thin, and it gets very hot. And in our case, we have on 24 hours a day too, which makes it even hotter. And um, you can see it's really small. There's nothing really special about it. Like I said, there are uh, four SDI ins, two HDMI ins. There is an HDI and SDI out for program and an HDMI and SDI out for uh, the program monitor like we just, we're just showing you. Um, it's a very inexpensive and it's rock solid for what it's, what it's for. Um, like I said, I'd like to have something a little bit bigger ultimately that could do some things, maybe like a, a TriCaster or something like that, some additional features that are in it. But for what, for what it is and for the price, it works great for us. It's an it's a inexpensive way to get started in creating your own video studio. All right, that is it for this week. Uh, next week, I think I'm going to work, uh, show you some workflow and how we do our workflow here and how we take things out of the Blackmagic recorders and put them 
into uh, Adobe Premiere and get them out and give you some of the kind of behind the scenes secrets of how we do things. We have some custom written uh, stuff as well and we'll talk about what it does and uh, some of our workflows so that we don't got to spend a ton of time uh, doing post-production and getting things up and spending time in front of uh, uploads and stuff like that. We kind of have that all kind of automated and uh, we've developed our own back-end podcasting system as well and we've custom written stuff for Roku now and as we add more and more things we're custom writing uh, into that app, into that system as well and we'll walk through all that stuff in the next episode. All right that's it for New Media Tech this week. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.